The Google Play Store is home to millions of apps, games, movies, and books, and it's got a long history dating back to 2008. That's 13 years ago. It honestly makes me feel old. Well, I'm about to shock you with 10 facts that you probably didn't know about the Play Store. First off, the Play Store used to be called the Android Market, and their logo was a bag with an Android on the front, implying that you're going to the market to shop for some apps. Here's the funny part though. Google actually didn't want to use the word store within its title because they felt that it implied that a middleman was involved between the developers and the users. The word market, on the other hand, implied that the app was instead an open and unobstructed environment providing a closer connection between the users and the developers. Well, all that got thrown out the window because in 2012, Google just ended up changing the name to the Play Store. Now, when Google announced that they were about to release the Android market, they promised that it would arrive with around 50 apps. That already seems like a crazy small number considering that there are now millions of apps on the Play Store, but in actuality, they didn't even accomplish that goal. According to an article from PC World, the Android market launched with only 13 applications. 13! <laughs> and the reason for this is because they simply ran out of time. Another fun fact is that when the Android market launched in late 2008, it only had free apps. People couldn't charge for their applications and were just making them for fun without anything in return. They even had to pay a one-time $25 registration fee to publish their apps. That's still a thing, by the way, till this day. It wasn't until 2009 that Google finally supported paid applications in both the US and UK. In-app purchases then came two years later in 2011. But here's the crazy part. When paid apps first got introduced, Google never took a cut. They'd stated that the developers would receive 70% of the revenue, while the other 30% went to carriers and billing settlement fees. It's still a similar model to this day with the exception of subscription-based models. On the topic of paid apps, if you ever bought an app back in 2008, you had up to 24 hours to get a refund. Pretty spectacular, but you can probably see how some people would take advantage of this, like finishing up a small game before the refund window expires. Then in 2010, the refund period got shortened to an extreme 15 minutes. And that was a huge problem because some games, when you open them, had you download large amounts of data before you could even start playing and the 15 minutes would expire. So in 2014, Google updated it to two hours, which is a lot more reasonable. Then two years later, Google also allowed anyone to submit a refund request if you paid for an app or bought an in-app purchase within 48 hours. To get to this page, you just need to scroll all the way to the bottom of the apps page on the Play Store and then tap on Google Play Refund Policy. From there, you can request a refund. Now, before moving on, I wanted to give a shout out to Dotted Sign for sponsoring this video. Dotted Sign is the best e-signature solution to effortlessly sign documents and get signatures from others in a legal and secure process. It's as simple as just importing the document and within the contract, you can sign it by drawing your signature. You can import your contracts, no matter if it's from the web or mobile devices, then you sign. If you want others to sign the contract, you just need to do the extra steps of adding their email, choosing where they can sign in remotely from anywhere in the world, or if they need to meet with you face to face. You can assign fields for the signatures, text and dates so that your clients know exactly where to input their data. You can also assign an expiration date, and Dotted Sign will auto remind anyone who has not yet signed the document to do so before it's too late. The best part is that other signers won't need the app to fill out the document. They can do it through email and they can use whatever device they like, including their desktop, iOS, or Android. I even love that you get a visual progress bar within Dotted Sign to let you monitor the signer's statuses. As if that wasn't enough, Dotted Sign comes with many other features, such as digital audit trails that let you know every change made to the document for evidence. Each document signed also has a digital certificate that authenticates the signatures as well as the third party timestamp showing the document is authentic and protected well. And if you upgrade to the pro version, you can have unlimited signers and tasks instead of just three and you get a reusable template. I even have a great deal for you guys. If you use the link in the description, you'll get a 30 day free trial for the pro version of Dotted Sign, but it's only available to the first 200 new users. So you better act fast. Anyways, back to the video. Another hidden feature that can come in handy if you're experiencing problems with the Play Store is that you can quickly update it to the latest version by tapping on your Google account and then going into settings, about, and there you will be able to update the Play Store. You may already have the latest version installed, but it wouldn't hurt to double check. 
Also within the Play Store settings, if you tap on general and then notifications, you can get notified when an app is finished updating. By default, the setting is disabled and I'm not sure why. If you go back and jump into account and device preferences, here you can easily leave every beta program that you ever joined with a tap of a button. It comes in handy if you're planning to update to a newly released software update and don't want to deal with any bugs within some of your favorite apps. Nowadays, apps within the Play Store are very detailed, so you get a good idea of what you're downloading or purchasing. You get a promo video, screenshots, descriptions, number of downloads, etc. But things were always so helpful in the past. In the first days, the Android market didn't even support screenshots. All you got was the app's logo, description, reviews, and then a way to contact the developer. That's it, it was pretty bland. And so was the entire UI of the Android market. It had a dark theme that ironically made it somewhat ahead of its time, but everything else was pretty basic. The front page had a carousel for some of the featured apps. You had four selections down below, apps, games, search, and downloads, simple. A year later in 2009, the design got a huge breadth of life. There were colors, tabs, small banners, a dedicated icon, and screenshots were finally a thing. Then 2010 came around and this is where things got really weird. The carousel made a reappearance, that 15 minute refund window got introduced, and the Play Store just looked a lot more like a game than an actual store. A really weird year. In 2011 though, Google brought out another new UI and this time they came up with a card-like interface. They brought back the tabs and made app listings a lot more detailed with the number of downloads and content rating. They also introduced the option to buy books and rent movies, a step in the right direction. Then in 2012, they still kept the same design, but they renamed the Android market to the Google Play Store. They also allowed the Play Store website to download apps onto your phone, and they even introduced Google Play gift cards. Finally, in 2013, that's when things started to look very similar to what we have now. They really just tweaked things around, but the foundation has been the same, unlike the previous years. Now we have Material U theming, tabs at the bottom, and I'm excited to see if the Play Store improves in the future. Last but not least, on the For You page, there's actually a very useful section that I like to check whenever I want to find new underrated apps. It'll take a good amount of scrolls to find it because Google doesn't want their everyday users to use it, but it's called Apps in Development. And this menu gets updated with spectacular apps that are always free and are labeled as early access. Trust me, I have featured so many apps from this menu in my best Android app segments. It's a fantastic menu. Anyways, those are 10 things that I bet you didn't know about the Google Play Store. If you guys found this video to be helpful in any way, a quick thumbs up would seriously go a long way to helping this video get picked up by the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you enjoyed what you saw, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? I promise quality videos like this are a weekly thing on the channel and you're not going to want to miss out. Either way, thank you guys so much for tuning in once again and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!